for his love and his mercy and for his grace. Amen. I thank him because he is within us and he lives within us every day. Yes. Living and guiding and yes. everything. Oh. I do thank my church for being with us tonight and I'm so thankful to your church and Brother Billy for allowing me to be here tonight. Amen. I don't know if I will need this. I think I'm pretty loud so we'll, we'll try to do this. I come in a different manner than some ministers do. Mm -hmm. But nevertheless, I come with the Word of God. Amen. And that is what I have been called to bring forth, is to speak the Word. Yes. And there's something that I'd like to share with you tonight. And I'm so thankful that I have the opportunity for that. Amen. So if you've got your Bibles, I do use a King James Version Bible. That's what my mama told me to use, and that's what I use. So if you will, we're going to start, and I'm going to do my very best to bring this together as God is wanting it to be brought together. Yes. But we're going to talk about a calling. We've heard many things tonight, and every song has touched on what I had to bring tonight. And we're going to start with Romans chapter 11, please. And I read the Word anytime. If you ever have me to come back, or before tonight's over with, you're going to know that Joyce reads the Word. Amen. She likes Amen. the Word. She wants the Word to back up what she is speaking. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, Romans chapter 11, and we're going to begin at verse 25. For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in, in part is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come. Amen. And so all Israel shall be saved, as it is written, There shall come out of Zion the deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant unto them, yes. when I shall take away their sins. Now I'm going to stop there just a minute, and I'm going to speak on this scripture where it says, And so all of Israel shall be saved, as it is written, There shall come out of Zion the deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. Amen. And I want to speak just a few words on that because I think it's well noted that it needs to be done. Amen. Jacob being the flesh, Israel being the spirit. Amen. Ungodliness has to be taken away from the flesh for the spirit to overshadow and to cover and to bring forth the righteousness of God. So therefore, as it says, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. It's going to turn ungodliness, that Spirit of God, is going to turn ungodliness from all the flesh as the Spirit of God moves within to cleanse us, to keep us, to bring us into where we need to be. Amen. Verse 28, As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sake, but as touching the election, they are beloved for the fathers. In the natural... They still see that Israel is blinded to the Christ is coming, had come back and lived in the heart and lives of all people. He, they failed to see that he walked on the earth as, as a man. But because of that blindness, it allowed something wonderful to take place. It allowed something fantastic to happen. Not only in Israel, but all over the universe. Amen. And that's what this is all about. Yeah. For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. I want to say it again. For the gifts and calling of God, God are without repentance. Everyone has a calling. I don't care what it is. If it's to sit down in a pew, right. if it's to take out the trash, if it's to sing a song, if it's to pray for someone, if it's to speak the word, if yeah. it's to preach, if it's to teach, whatever the situation may be, you may smile at your neighbor. But everybody has a calling, and this calling is from God, and it is without repentance. God does not repent because He gives us these gifts, and He will not forgive if we do not do as He has asked us to do. At a certain time, there is a place that you may have to taste, and you may have to touch, and you may have to see that you have fallen away from the Spirit of God. But the love of God is strong, and it shall overshadow, just as it's doing with Jacob. And again, it will take you back in and forgive you of all your trespasses and your sins and will bring you into the righteousness of God. Because it says, for the gifts and calls.
calling of God are without repentance. Verse 30, For as ye in times past have not believed God, yet have now obtained mercy through their unbelief. Whose unbelief? We've been allowed to come into the mercy of God because of the unbelief unbelief of the Jews Amen. at the time that they was God's own chosen people, yeah. but they didn't understand. He was talking about them coming out of bondage. He was talking about them coming out through all the years and they had to make a great transition. They had to come out from underneath the law and come into the marvelous light of the Christ and they Mom. couldn't transition into that at that time. But if they had not been blinded, if they had not been blinded, we would not have been able to come in. Come on, come because we be in the Gentile nation, yeah. and that's who I'm talking about tonight, and that's who I'm talking to tonight. Yeah. We be in the Gentile nation had to have a way made that we could come in to the righteousness of God. Amen. Now, I'm going to go to Acts chapter 2. Bear with me, and I'm going to do my best to bring this in. Sometimes, I don't know about the rest of y'all, but sometimes so many things start popping into my mind, it's hard for me sometimes to keep it all together, to keep it all in one thought that it needs to be. But Acts chapter 2, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. This was everybody, all the devout people of Israel, the Jews, and that no doubt there was others that was listening. They may have not thought they was listening, but there was others listening because it says, And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as far, and set up each of, upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So therefore all the nations of the world was there at that time. Yes. And as the Spirit of God began to move and began to bring forth all these different tongues, everyone in every nation heard the Word of God in their own tongue. Not a tongue that was not known, but in a tongue that they knew, they understood, and they heard what the Spirit of God was speaking. Right. Yes. Every nation. Didn't leave any nation now. Right. But I have to come back to this and, and think and say, at this present time, when this Pentecost, day of Pentecost came, it actually came unto the Jewish nation, God's chosen people. Well, what about the Gentiles? What happened? Well, it had to come unto the chosen people first before it could come to somebody that was not on the choices vine at the time. Let me read on. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. Out of every nation didn't leave anyone out, but it came unto the Jewish people. Come on. Now you know as time goes on, and you know in the other parts of the Bible and in the Word of God and how that the Jewish people, they couldn't, the, the scribes and the Pharisees and how they couldn't stand it because Christ was coming forth because they didn't understand. Because if he, they had known, they would have never crucified Him. Yeah, right. If He hadn't have been crucified, then all of us could not have come in to Amen. the glorious Gospel of Christ. Yeah, right. So let's go. Acts chapter 10. I'm going to keep you going. <clears throat> Acts chapter 10. We just got through talking about the Jewish day of Pentecost. Yeah. Now we're going to get into something else. It's going to be a little bit different. Something that the world, which at that time was the Jewish nation, the world had not seen. We're going to start in chapter 10, and I'm going to go with verse 1. And we're, if it's God's will, we're going to go through every verse. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian Band, a devout man and one that feared God with all his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. It didn't say he was Jewish. It said he was of an Italian band. He saw in a vision evidently about the ninth hour 
of the day, an angel of God coming into him and saying unto him, Cornelius. And when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? But thank God he recognized it was the Lord. Amen. There's times when I want to make sure that I'm recognizing the Lord. There's yeah. times when we don't, be honest. There's times when we don't recognize the Lord. But Cornelius recognized that it was his Lord that oh. was talking to him. Amen. Of the Italian band. Oh. And when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thy alms are come up for a memorial before God. Who did it come up to? It come up to God. Yes. Whose prayer was it? This Gentile person yes. who was of an Italian band. Amen. Prayers came up before God. And who did he say he had brought it up to? His, all of his house and Cornelius. Now let's keep on going. Verse 5. And now send me to Joppa and call for one Simon whose surname is Peter. I'm going to stop there just for a second because I've got to share this with you. I'm like Brother Mike. I get excited all down inside. Simon being the tanner, being the flesh. Peter being the spirit, being the rock. What we talk about Jacob and Israel, Jacob was, but then he was named Israel. Yes. Simon was, and then he was named Peter. Yes. Let's go on. He lodges with one Simon and Tanner, whose house is by the seaside. He shall tell thee what thou oughtest to do. And when the angel which spake unto Cornelius was departed, he called two of his household servants and a devout soldier of them that waited on him continually. And when he had declared all these things unto them, in other words, he expounded everything that the vision that the Spirit of God had brought unto him and gave it and shared it with those that was with him. Yes. On the morrow, as they went on their journey and drew nigh unto the city, Peter went up upon the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. Six being, I'm going to go on and share this with you too as well. Six being man's number. The ninth hour that the Spirit of God came unto Cornelius is the time of life. So the time of life came unto Cornelius and man's number came unto Peter. Let's go on. It says, And he became very hungry and would have eaten, but while they made ready, he fell into a trance. This was Peter now. And saw heaven opened, and a certain vessel descending unto him, as it had been a great sheet knit at the four corners, and let down to the earth. At the four corners of what? The four corners of earth. North, south, east, and west. It left nothing undone. Amen. And everything in between. Wherein were all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth, and wild beasts, and creeping things, and fowls of the air. What are these things that is creeping? What are these things that are fowls of the air? What are these things? It's everything. I'm going to say it the way that God gives it to me. It's everything that's not of God. But yet he saw all these things coming in the four corners of this taking place. And there came a voice to him. It says, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. And then Peter, being devout Jew, but Peter said, Not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. Yes. Meaning, he didn't touch anything according to what the law had taught him Amen. to do. Yeah. But that's not what the Lord was telling him. He was telling him that there was things coming in that might be unclean right now. But don't call them <laughs> common because after the Spirit of God gets through with it, it's going to be royalty just like me and you. I'm all. So let's go on. All right. Okay, let me see where I'm at. Now. But Peter said, Not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. And the voice spake unto him again the second time, What God hath cleansed, hath called, that call not thou common. Therefore, he's telling them, something's fixing to take place. You're not going to understand. Yeah. But whatever I, the Lord God, says it's going to do, 
let it alone because it is of God. Mm -hmm. This was done thrice, and the vessel was received up again into heaven. And I thought about that, and I thought, Lord, why was it done thrice? Well, there's three dispensations of time. There's three dispensations of heaven. There's three dispensations of God. So in every dispensation of time, God had cleansed everything and said that He could come through. Come on. Now while Peter doubted in himself that this vision which he had seen should mean, behold, the men which were sent from Cornelius had made inquiry for Simon's house and stood there, or stood before the gate, and called and asked whether Simon, which was surnamed Peter, yeah. were lodged there. While Peter thought on the vision, the Spirit said unto him, Behold, three men seek thee. Arise, therefore, and get thee down and go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. He had saw the vision. God had told him to call nothing common or unclean. Yeah. Therefore, the Spirit of God saw the men, bring the men to Peter. Peter wants to go with these men. So let's continue. Then Peter went down to the men which were sent in unto him from Cornelius and said, Behold, I am he whom ye see. What is the cause wherefore ye are come? And they said, Cornelius the centurion, a just man, a Gentile, a just man, one that feareth God, a Gentile that feareth God, Amen. and a good report among all the nations of the Jews, was warned from God by a holy angel to send for thee into his house and to hear words of thee. Then called he them and lodged them. And on the morrow Peter went away with them, and certain brethren from Joppa accompanied him. And the morrow after they entered into Caesarea, and Cornelius waited for them, and had called together his kinsmen and near friends. All the time that this was taking place, Cornelius didn't sit still. He began to say, Uncle, come. Yeah. Brother, come. Yeah. Sister, come. Amen. Children, come. He began to call them all in because he knew, he knew in his heart something was fixing to take place. Amen. And as he talked with him, wait a minute, let me go back up here. And as Peter was coming in to Cornelius, met him and fell down at his feet and worshipped him, but Peter took him up, saying, Stand up, I myself am a man. Yeah. And as he talked with him, he went in and found many that were come together. And he said unto them, Ye know how that it is unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come unto one of another nation. But God, who is it? But uh, God... Yeah has Amen. showed me that I should not call any man. Who was it? That he showed him, he showed him fowls of the air, yeah. four-footed beasts. What did he show him? What does Peter say? But God has showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. Amen. Therefore came I unto you without gainsaying, as soon as I was sent for, I asked therefore for what intent ye have sent for me. And Cornelius said, Four days ago I was fasting until this hour, and at the ninth hour I prayed in my house. And behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing, and said, Cornelius, thy prayer is heard, and thy alms are had in remembrance in the sight of God. Send therefore to Joppa, and call hither Simon, whose surname is Peter. Call that flesh, whose spirit is Peter, he is lodged in the house of one Simon a tanner by the seaside, who when he cometh shall speak unto thee. Immediately therefore I sent to thee, and thou hast well done that thou art come. Now therefore are we all here present before God to hear all things that are commanded thee of God. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth perceive that God is no respecter of God. Persons. Amen. But in every nation, he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. 
the word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. Yes. That word I say ye know, which was published throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptizing which John preached. It wasn't a secret. It was spoken. It was brought forth. Yes. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Yes. And we are witnesses of all things which he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they slew and hanged on a tree. Oh, him you. God raised up the third day and showed him openly, not to all the people, but unto the witnesses chosen before of God, even to us, who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is the he which was ordained of God to be the judge of the quick and the dead. To him give all the prophets witness that through his name whosoever believeth in him shall receive the remission of sins. Amen. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all of them which heard the word. The Holy Ghost fell. Yes. Another day of Pentecost come had on. come unto all the Gentile nations, yes. Yes. unto all people. Now was brought in to the day of Pentecost that Hallelujah. they may hear and see and understand the Lord God. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished. They were astonished that the Jews was standing there and they was watching and they were seeing all the Gentile nation people, Cornelius and all his house. They were coming in yes. to this great gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. As many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God, then answered Peter, Can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord, then prayed they him to tarry certain days. Yes. Now I'm going to stop and I'm going to talk just a few minutes. At this present time, I'll try to be still. At this present time, Peter, and he brought them forth and he said, could anybody say that these people couldn't be baptized? None could say, none could be baptized. Yeah. But all was to be baptized. And they was needing Peter to stay and wanting him to stay and tarry and expound upon the scriptures that God had given him because he had walked with Jesus Christ himself in the flesh. And he, they wanted him to tell them more, tell them more, tell them more. But it wasn't to be. It wasn't to be for Peter he opened the door for the Gentiles to come in. Yeah. But it wasn't for him to be, to teach them and to expound to them all the things that Christ had brought unto them. Yeah. But it was one oh, yeah. who was of a Jewish, he was a Hebrew, come on. and he was of anyone that you wanted of much stature. Yeah. He was the one that was going to be blinded on the way to Damascus. Hallelujah. And he was the one that was going to be sent and to all the Gentile nations yes. to set up the church of the living God, oh, Jesus yes. Christ. Amen. And He is the one that was to break open all the doors and all the bondages and bring forth the Word of God separated oh. from all the apostles for three years that men yes. would not teach Him, but that He would hear from Christ Himself yes. so that He would have the truth to give the revelations Amen. unto God's children. Yes. This is fantastic news. Come on. But I've got to tell you something else. We as a Gentile nation has a duty to bring forth the gospel of Christ Amen. and to speak the truth of God's word to all that has an ear to hear, to Come understand on. what God is calling them in. And all has been calling. For when Christ was hung on the cross, the calling was made and all would be able to come in Come to the righteousness of God. But when we have done our due and what we are doing now, 
bringing forth the Word and the Spirit of God as God has given it to us. We are not only bringing it to our Gentile brothers and sisters in all the nations, but we've got to bring this truth back unto the Jewish people Amen. that they may hear and see and know that the Spirit of God is alive and aware yes. within His people. Amen. And when we see them come in, and we see them, then we know that God's chosen people will come back. It's not the way that the world sees it coming back, but it is coming back unto the righteousness of Christ. Because it goes on and tells us that if the right... Let me go on. I'm not going to try to quote it. Let's go to uh, Romans. I want to go back to Romans. I can't get the Scripture the way I want it, Hazel. The one that I'm talking about says if this... If the love first be holy, I believe it's chapter 11. I'm going to Romans. I'm going to get that scripture. I believe it's chapter 11. Verse 16. For if the first fruit be holy, the lump is also holy. Do you hear what it's saying? We without the Jews cannot enter into the, the fullness of Christ. The Jews without us cannot enter in to the fullness of Christ. So it says, For if the first fruit be holy, the lump is also holy. That means when the Jewish people have come in and recognized Jesus Christ as, as Savior and Redeemer of all the world, of all of mankind, then the whole lump is going to be whole. We've got our part to do individually and as a body as a whole. For if the first fruit be whole, holy, the lump is also holy. And if the root be holy, so are the branches. And what were we? We were grafted in on the vine as the branches. And also remember, says if we don't follow after the righteousness of God, those branches can be cut off and burned just as easily as they was grafted in. Boast not against the branches, but if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. Thou wilt say then, the branches were broken off, that I might be grafted in. Thank God there was a blindness that had to take place. It was set in the Garden of Eden. It was in the mind of God. And it brought an open door for all nations to come unto the righteousness of our Lord Jesus Christ. I started this service out with talking about the callings, the gifts and callings that God has given that is without repentance. And that is true. It is without repentance. But I wanted to tell each and every one of us, I want to tell you, I want to tell me, I want to tell my son, I want to tell our family, I want to tell everyone that God allows me to tell. Go to Romans chapter 8. And I'm going to start at verse 34. That everyone has a calling, whatever it may be. You do your calling that God has called you to do. Do it to the very best of your ability. And I'm going to tell you something. It's a secret and it's not a secret. To, to the children of God, they know. But to them that don't know, they are lost. They are depressed and they are, they are happy and under. Everything that comes with the will. But unto all that knows... Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, For thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through Him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing or no one can take you away from doing the calling that God has put upon your heart and your life in this time or the times to come. God is with us. His name was Emmanuel. 
and Emmanuel means God Amen. is with us. Amen. God is true. The Christ within, and He lives. And He lives to bring us into the fullness of His gospel. I thank you tonight. I appreciate the time that you've given. I am so thankful for the Word of God. I thank you because He works within me every day. He works within you every day. And I am so thankful for what God is doing. We are not alone. God is with us. Amen. Amen.